What kind of world do I want to live in? I think about this question a lot. For our generation and for specifically my group of people, which is refugees, the circumstances might dismantle any vision of the future that we have. You're trying to rebuild, you're trying to make a future for yourself, and then the climate related disaster comes and you start again. It's not about how it's affecting you now, it's about how it's affecting you your entire life. First step to understand is that we're all a part of it. None of us are going to be left out by the crisis. We're at a stage where if we don't act now, really there won't be very much left. There are generations that will never see certain things that we grew up seeing in real life. We have to start treating this like the emergency it is. To achieve the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, we have to go from an intention to a serious commitment. Business leaders really need to rethink how they conduct their business and invest in creating systems that are climate friendly. The action I would like to see is accountability. Structures being put in place where countries aren't just asked to do something, but they're kept accountable to the decisions that they make. There has to be that strong collaboration between government, between corporations, between youth activists to drive change forward. The world I would want to live in is a world where imagining the future is not a privilege. I want to live in a world where people do not give up on hope, hope that a positive change is possible. The fact that you're listening today means that you are willing to make a change. Welcome, everyone, to this great session we have on entrepreneurship. Uh, my name is Gib Bullock. I am author of a book called The Entrepreneur, Confessions of a Corporate Insurgent. Um, and um, I can't tell you how delighted I am that this, uh, this topic is on the, the agenda of um, the World Economic Forum. And we've got a great panel of speakers that are going to come and talk about not just the opportunities that there are in uh, driving uh, ESG goals within a company, um, the opportunities for moving beyond just mere compliance to actually finding the upsides and the business opportunities and tapping into the innovative potential that uh, that employees actually have within their organizations. And how do we move from beyond just unilateral action from one company to joining the dots up and having entrepreneurs and different organizations start to come together around tough global issues and drive collaborative action. So it's going to be an interesting uh, discussion. And um, we let me briefly just say who the panelists uh, are for once. We have, um, first of all, Ezgi uh, Barinas, um, who is the Chief Sustainability Officer at AB uh, InBev. And before that, she's been on the foundation and still is on the board of the foundation for AB InBev. Welcome. And we have also uh, Harold Nusser. Harold is a seasoned entrepreneur uh, working in the health sector with Novartis and has recently moved to uh, Gilead, um, where he is the head of global patient, patient solutions at uh, Gilead. Then we have Ben Jordan. Ben is a senior director for environmental policy in the Coca-Cola company. And he has been at the forefront of, of driving some of the uh, innovative solutions, uh, particularly around plastics and, and broader solutions in global uh, the global supply chain of Coca-Cola. And last but not least, uh, we have Steve uh, Kruskos, who is the Global Managing Partner for Business Enablement in EY. And again, I think he will have some very interesting perspectives from a seasoned career in EY about what this topic of entrepreneurship and ESG means for uh, clients of a, a global management consultancy. So, uh, without further ado, let me move into uh, uh, some some questions, and I'm going to start with uh, you, Esgi. If I can just talk to you about um, 
the sort of enormous potential that there are in the extended supply and and distribution uh, channels of an organization like AB InBev, where do you see the opportunities for innovation within that kind of system and, and the role that entrepreneurship can play in, in tapping into these opportunities? Thank you, Gabe and the WEF team. Thanks for having me today. It's a pleasure to join the panel. So as the leading global brewer, ABI has operations in nearly 50 markets. What makes us quite unique for a company our size is how we buy, make, sell over 90% of our products locally. So when we are working to tackle our sustainability challenges for our business, that means those are sustainability challenges for our entire value chain and the communities where we live and live and work. Um, so, you know, take climate, for example, we've got a 100% renewable electricity target, a 25% emission reduction target across the whole value chain in an eight year time frame. These are really ambitious targets. So given how 80% of those emissions lie in scope three, we know that we can't tackle them alone inside our four, four walls. Um, so we would have to work with our uh, supply chains for packaging, logistics, product cooling, and our you know agricultural uh, supply chain. So because these fall again outside our, our four, four walls, we need to uh, find new ways. And I would say work up and down the, the uh, value chain to create that real change. So give, you know, when you say, where does the innovation opportunity lie? I would say uh, it is very much in how we engage with our supply chain in more strategic and collaborative ways to find new ways of working, new innovations, cutting edge solutions to our shared challenges. This is why we launched 100 plus accelerator program a few years ago, which is an open platform to support promising ideas and new innovations um, where we can uh, take them, pilot them and, and scale them up if we find the solutions to be helpful to to um, uh, to solve our shared challenges. And I think that's again, that's where the real opportunity is for us to create that lasting change across across the whole value chain and in the communities. That's great. No, I, I love that. And the fact that you're sort of you know, inspiring entrepreneurs, social entrepreneurs and others outside of the organization, but also there must be links with the entrepreneurs that exist inside your organization as well. I mean, are there any kind of examples of where that's worked, where you're sort of taking, you know, where you're creating new sources of value that you perhaps hadn't envisaged before or that hadn't come out the R&D department? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we're, we're looking to create that value in, in every part of our organization. And uh, one recent development is how we uh, take our what we call our uh, brewers spent grain. So the, the grain that's left, left over at the end of the brewing process um, it is high in protein, high in fiber. Uh, so now we created a, a company called Evergrain that that um, ABMF supports to create, um, you know, plant based protein solutions uh, for the world. And we're looking to learn from our R&D teams internally. We're partnering with R&D and research teams externally as well. Again, the idea is how do you uh, create value and how do you really put yourself as part of a broader uh, food systems, right? And how we work with our farmers on agricultural supply chains or how we look at our um, raw materials or, or spent grain at the end of that, that brewing process so that we can create value uh, for all. Great. Super. No, thanks, Sesgi. And, and Harold, I mentioned that you are sort of a practitioner uh, and well-known practitioner in the, in the entrepreneurship space. It's not easy, right, um, to, to, to drive change from within an organization. Um, it's different from being a startup on the outside. I mean, can you talk about either what you were doing a little bit in terms of your uh, experience in health and, and some of the challenges that there are within the fighting this corporate immune system, as I sometimes call it? Thank you, Gip. Yes, of course. I mean, <clears throat> um, for me, it's important to start with outcomes that you want to achieve, not necessarily outputs which are predetermined through an ESG metric set, but to, but to really define from within the core business what you, what you want to achieve um, and target those outcomes to the most material topics of a company. Within pharmaceuticals, that is availability and affordability of medicines to mitigate the risks from not um, having those medicines available and affordable on one hand, but even more importantly, um, to drive a constructive forward-looking narrative that this is actually helpful for shareholders as well. All too often, social entrepreneurship is interpreted as introducing an innovation with positive societal intent within the corporation. Ideally, this can then be internally adapted, scaled and used as one of the few CSR initiatives that make it to the annual report or even into an investor call. However, and let me be a little provocative here, CSR initiatives <laughs> manifest the status quo. 
ESG reporting often is a rhetoric exercise unless material topics are linked to the core business strategy. To me, social entrepreneurship is not less than pioneering an intentional process originating in a corporation designed to fundamentally change the components and structures that prevent the creation of positive societal outcomes. Social entrepreneurship, therefore, needs to span across functions and hierarchies in a company and reach far beyond. So can I ask you a a provocative question back, I suppose? I mean, is the CSR department or has your experience of the CSR department been a help or a hindrance to you as a as an entrepreneur, and I speak as someone with his own <laughs> challenges in that front. Now, let's let's put it that way. Um, a well-functioning corporate responsibility department engages into corporate decision-making processes and has the material outcomes, be it societal outcomes or environmental governance outcomes in mind, and incorporates that into the decision-making, into the usual business decision-making. Um, It can, of course, occasionally be hindering as well when when there's too much of a focus for public relations um, and and, uh, a short-term oriented um, corporate bus um, externally. And um, and what, what determines success ultimately is to link initiatives to the core fundamental business strategy and then also have a narrative towards shareholders yeah. Um, based on primary data and not just indices. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I, I, I buy into that. And the upside is, is huge. Thanks, uh, thanks, Harold. Turning to, to you now, Ben, I was interested to read uh, in your, your profile that you grew up in a, 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 a peach farm in Georgia, and that sort of got you into this environmental movement. And now you're in the senior role within Cork, trying to change an organization. The latent potential you must have than Coca-Cola to drive change uh, for this movement that we're passionate about. Can you talk about that? There's a little bit of noise, but hopefully you can hear me. Sure. Um, thanks, Gib. And so I just passed the 25-year mark at the Coca-Cola company, and I've been very fortunate to work in a number of different sustainability-related roles on the global and the North American side of our business. And, you know, one of the um, one of the key roles that I've um, worked in for several years was leading our sustainable agriculture programs within our procurement organization. And so um, that was coming full circle a little bit from having grown up on a farm and knowing a little bit about farming, but but also real appreciation for how that links to, you know, social and environmental um, impact, but, but good as well. Um, when I think about our work, and, and I'll just maybe build on something that, as he said, um, about the 100 plus accelerator. Uh, so AB InBev is now in their third class of innovators and startups that they've engaged through the 100 plus accelerator. And for year three, they recruited us and Colgate and Unilever to be a part of that process. And we've really taken that on. And, and now across the four companies, we're, um, we're in, engaging with over 35 startups. Um, but the way we use that and take, taking that on within Coca-Cola is we've sort of gotten infected, right? You know, by the infectious, you know, enthusiasm of these social entrepreneurs that we're now working with on these pilot projects. You know, one of the areas that I um, lead now is around plastics and circular economy. Three years ago, we launched our World Without Waste um, effort as globally as a a business initiative, a top three priority business initiative of our CEO, not a sustainability initiative per se. And with that, you know, we uh, motivated 750,000 Coca-Cola people, you know, the Coca-Cola company and our bottlers around the world to be a part of that, right? You know, bring us your ideas, come be a part of um, the program. And, and, you know, through doing that, we've unlocked, um, you know, a handful of ideas that we would not have unlocked otherwise, you know, um, just by having a champion by the sustainability team to get to another one of your, of your points. Um, Collaboration for us has been outside of Coca-Cola has been a key part of that program. And in addition to the 100 plus accelerator work with ABM, Bev and Colgate and Unilever, we are, of course, part of the Global Plastic Action Partnership uh, led by Kristen and, and Wes and, you know, engaging with other corporations, Pepsi, Nestle, Dow um, as part of that and um, really driving national plastic action partnerships in a handful of pilot um, countries. Um, to really, as, as multi-stakeholder initiatives involving government, industry, 
um, NGOs, community groups, right? And, and again, I think a big push on our part and our side is how do, we, how do we leverage those ideas, those innovative ideas externally and bring those in to kind of infect us, if you will, internally um, to make more change. That's great. Um, fantastic. Thanks, uh, thanks Ben. Um, turning to you now, Steve, I, I have certainly a degree of affinity. I mean, come from a big consultancy background of 20 years, and I see huge potential in uh, tapping into this potential of entrepreneurship and the ESG agenda within commercial clients and driving change. What's, ES, what's EY's um, approach to this? How do you see this being an opportunity to move from just working with the C-suite as opposed to empowering those further down the organization? Uh, thanks, Gibbon, and thanks for having me. Um, you know, look, we uh, at EY, first of all, we had the privilege of working with FIBC and the development of the metrics, which has just been a fantastic situation. Uh, I, I think we have the opportunity of a lifetime uh, and maybe the obligation um, of a lifetime to really harness the power of our ecosystem, right? When you think about the large corporate clients that we have access to from both an attest as well as consulting perspective, when you think about the private equity portfolios that we and firms like us have access to, and you think about you know, the unparalleled access we have to you know, fast growing entrepreneurial businesses um, uh, and social entrepreneurs through, um, uh, through our entrepreneurial services um, practice and, and market segment, we have the ability to bring that ecosystem together, share ideas, um, and, and help all of these companies um, really partner together to develop a better future. You know, whether we're working with a business on strategy or on their supply chain or on their customers and channels, um, or in helping them develop measures, right, for their business um, or testing on those measures, sustainability has to be a common thread now in everything we do, um, a little bit like digital technology was, you know, several years ago when that, um, uh, when that concept came into being, I think uh, this is even, this is even bigger. Um, uh, the whole of ESG and especially the sustainability part is something that we have to infuse in every single service uh, that we offer in every discussion and every form. Great. Um, I'm going to, I'm conscious that we have to draw the, the, the sort of public session to a close shortly and, and move to the, the, the private session. But I'm going to go back to each speaker very quickly and turn just for literally a, a tweet, a one, uh, a one sentence or 140, however many characters we're allowed now, just in terms of what you see as the latent potential for your organization of, of entrepreneurship. Um, so I'll come back to you in a second, Steve, and let you, uh, let you uh, well, maybe I start with you actually, and just say, you know, in a nutshell for EY, what is the what what is the 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 the, the potential? Um, it's really to live our purpose of building a better working world and to help other organizations uh, live and fulfill their purpose. And that then goes across the whole of your organization, which is great outside of the department. Where will I go next? I'm going to go to Harold, perhaps a tweet on yeah. entrepreneurship. Employee attraction, development, and retention. Well said. I concur with that totally. Esgi, what's your tweet? Yeah, I, I would say all of the above, but at ADI, we have a you know long-term vision to build a company for the next 100 plus years. And again, I do want to make that point around the materiality of ESG. I fully agree uh, with the, my fellow panelists here that um, the approach has to be rooted in what is material for the business and, and for our stakeholders around the world. Thanks, Esgi. And Ben, your tweet? I was going to go towards the same direction with it's all about integrating with the business, you know, and making sure that it's, it's business value, business integrated, not a sustainability initiative itself, but, but really driving progress across the business. Well, thank you all very much. Um, hopefully uh, that's been something of a, a short, sharp sort of tour of some of the great things that are going on in, in some of these large organizations and people can get a, just a, a sense of the potential of entrepreneurship.